Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I've been running my home network with Unify Gear for quite some time now. As many of you know, I've got this fancy 10 gigabit per second symmetrical internet connection here. And about five years ago, when that connection first got here, I got a Unify Dream Machine and built out a Unify network using their access points and a few of their other switches. And the other day I picked up a new switch in their repertoire, which is this one. This is kind of more of a home networking prosumer kind of device versus some of their rack mounted stuff. This is called the Flex 2.5G PoE. And as its name suggests, it is a power over ethernet switch that can deliver 2.5 gigabit per second performance over each of its ethernet ports. And all of these can provide PoE. And additionally, you've got your upstream connector here that can support an SFP plus or a 10 gig connector just on an RJ45. And this will give you not only your upstream capability, but you could also power the switch over PoE itself, but you do have the option to use a power supply with it as well. Now I got this switch because I am upgrading my Wi-Fi access points to Wi-Fi 7 and the new Wi-Fi access points from Unify can go beyond a gigabit, so they all have 2.5 gig connectors on board. And so I needed something with PoE and 2.5, and this one fit the bill. My current Unify PoE switch is only gigabit. So what I'll be able to do with this is get a bunch of additional 2.5 gigabit ports added to my studio down here, and I've got power now as an option on all of them. And I do have a bunch of video production gear that uses PoE, so this will be quite useful for that. Now, what I'll be doing is uplinking this to my main network over 10 gig, and I'll be keeping this in my data closet and using one of these directly attached copper cables, which are SFP connectors that go into there. And I've got a Unify distribution hub that also has an SFP connector, so it's upstream will be 10 gigabits, even though each port will be limited to 2.5. And a little later in the video, we will do a demo to see how the performance is on this, in addition to testing out its power capabilities. And there is some nuance to this, which we'll go over in a minute. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for the switch here with my own funds, along with the power supply that I also had to get. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. I should note, though, that the Dream Machine router that I've been using from Unify since 2020 did come in free of charge from Unify back then. But again, this one I paid for with my own funds. So why don't we get into this now and see what this switch is all about. Now, the price point on this came in at $199. They have a non-POE version that costs $159. Both this one and the non-POE version can be powered over Ethernet. So for example, I've got this cable here that is attached to my POE switch in the other room. If I connect it up here, you can see that it's lighting up and we will be able to use this switch without any other power connector. And this is true of both the PoE version here, along with the one that doesn't do PoE out. So the lower priced one does not do PoE on the output, but you can power it over PoE if you choose to do so. I made the mistake when I bought this in thinking that this came with a power supply, but it doesn't. So you do have to buy the power supply separately and it cost me an additional $80 to do it. And the reason why you might want to use the larger power supply is for power budget. So for example, right now, I have this plugged into my older Unify PoE switch. The best it will do is PoE plus, and that means that I will only have 16 watts of power available to the PoE ports on this switch right now as configured. So if I use the power adapter, I get 196 watts of power budget, but again, only 16 based on how I am currently connected. If you have a PoE++ input, you can get 76 watts of power availability or 46 watts over PoE++. And of course, you'll have to see whatever your injector or your switch provides. So I think what I'll do initially here is get this set up with uh, just this connection, but then I will disconnect everything, get the power supply attached, and have it configured similar to how I plan to use it rolling forward here. Now, from a hardware perspective, it doesn't have that industrial metal feel of the uh, rack-mounted gear that they make, but it feels like a very nicely designed consumer product nonetheless. 
It does get a bit warm, but there's no fan on board, so you'll definitely want to keep the area around it clear for cooling, but I haven't had any power issues with it so far in my testing. You have the option to leave it flat on the desk. They do have some rubber feet here at the bottom. They also have a mounting plate and hardware that you can use to mount it to the wall if you'd prefer to do that. But otherwise, a pretty simple piece of hardware here that as you'll see is not very difficult to use either. Now, a couple of other notes here before we configure things is that although you have two 10 gig ports here, you can only use one at a time. So when you have the RJ45 connected, the SFP Plus is disabled and vice versa. You can't get power over the SFP Plus, but that's not a big deal for me because I'm going to have the power supply attached and then have my 10 gig backbone running out of the SFP Plus port here. This port will be disabled and not used, but then I can uh, basically patch in all of these other ports to my wall connectors around the studio here. Now, like all of my other Unify gear, once my network detects that some new Unify piece of hardware is on the network, I get a notification on my phone to adopt it. I also, of course, can jump into my web-based control panel here. So here is the Flex. It's already showing up. I can click here to adopt it. And after a few minutes in a firmware update, we'll be ready to go and connect devices to the network. So why don't we let this do its thing and then we'll come back and see how it performs. All right, so I got everything up and running now. What I did do though was change from powering the switch over PoE to using the external power supply. That way I can connect up a bunch of PoE devices and see how it handles all of them. Uh, if I didn't do that, I would have very limited power budget based on what my current Unify switch can provide. Now already I've got one PoE device connected, which is this NDI video capture device. It is capturing video from my PC that I have plugged into this port here with a USB-C 2.5 gig adapter. So I thought we would start off here is just doing a basic speed test to see how everything works out. I am doing an internet speed test just because my internet speed should be able to support the full 2.5 gigs that each port here can provide. And of note, the switch is also sending back this NDI video. So we are going beyond 2.5 gig on the upstream back into the main network. As you can see here, I'm getting the speeds that I would expect out of a 2.5 gigabit ethernet adapter in both directions. So it looks as though I'm able to get the speed that we need here. And additionally, we're probably pumping another, I don't know, 80 to 120 megabits per second or so of video through that other port. So it looks like we've got plenty of bandwidth here to play with. Now, as far as the performance on this one is concerned, you've got 60 gigabits of switching capacity here, along with 30 gigabits per second of non-blocking throughput. Why don't we hook up a few other PoE devices and then we'll pop into the Unify control panel and see what we see. All right, next up, let's take a look at my NDI PTZ camera. This is from Bird Dog, and in full disclosure, they sent this to the channel free of charge a little while back for review. So we can get this powered up here. As you can see, the camera should be coming alive here in a second. We'll see some uh, light, hopefully, on the ethernet. There we go. And it does go through a boot up phase and then it starts moving its motor around and everything. And it looks as though it is coming up as I would expect it to. So we'll let that uh, chew on that for a minute. I also have another device here. This is a Bird Dog NDI capture board, similar to the other one that I was using for the PC a second ago. And so we'll connect this up. And although this doesn't have lights on the front or the back, it does have one on the front here. And that is lit up and we've got power going there. And I just remembered I've got another camera I can plug in. So let me go grab that and we'll see if this can handle all of it simultaneously. All right, this is looking like a messy video nerd layer, which is kind of what it is. Um, but we'll plug in this camera now. And as you can see, this one is lighting up and getting powered as well. So right now I've got one, two, three, four PoE devices running through the switch. I think I still have plenty of power budget available too. So let's jump in now to the control panel and we can see how we can configure everything and also get a feel for how the switch is performing from a power perspective. All right, so here we are on the Unify control panel. This is the desktop version, but you can also see a version of this on their mobile app. And here is our 2.5 gig pro switch. And if I scroll over to the right here, you can see that we have a good sense of our power budget. So right now we're using about 27 watts out of 196 watts total. I can get up to 60 watts out of each port. And then I can dig in a little bit. So for example, if we wanted to take a look at the bird dog camera, which I believe is plugged into port number six, I can drill into port six 
and get a feel for what's going on there. So we've got the bird dog here identified. We're drawing about 11 watts on that one. If I started moving the camera around, it might consume a little more power. And you can also see how it's connected. I can also dive in a little bit further and do some manual configuration of each port. And this is a very similar interface to what you might see on other Unify hardware. So I can have it be a mirror port, for example, if I wanted to do some packet inspection. I can have it automatically negotiate its speed, which is what I'm doing now. But if you're finding that your devices aren't negotiating properly, you can force it to a particular speed. And you've got all of the other uh, types of uh, manual controls that you typically find on these Unify switches. And that's one thing about Unify is that everything is so nice and tightly integrated. It looks very familiar and uh, the configuration process, once you have your initial Unify controller configured, is pretty much plug and play. The hardware gets detected, you get prompted and you click a button and it's suddenly part of your network and then you can drill in further and do more to it. Now for a controller, my Unify Dream Machine router is the controller. If you have a different router that you'd prefer to use, you can get a separate piece of hardware from Unify to act as the controller, which basically manages all the configuration. You can also run it in a Docker container or on a computer somewhere as well. So you do have a lot of options for how you handle all of this. But as you can see here, it's a pretty simple interface here and very much similar to what you would experience on other Unify hardware. So all in, it's got enough capacity for what I need it for. I think what I would have liked better would be to have an extra 10 gig port or two to give you the option for some faster connections along with the 2.5s here. But as far as its integration is concerned, I've been waiting for Unify to come up with something that was affordable, that had a decent power budget, and had that 2.5 gigabit uh, option, which many of their switches didn't have up until recently. So this one is a pretty nice choice here. My favorite switch in the house, though, is still one that's made by QNAP. That one has three 10 gigabit per second ports. I've got it upstairs in my gaming room. Uh, so I've got my gaming PC hooked up to one of those 10 gig ports. I've got another 10 gig for backhaul back into the main network. I've got a free 10 gigabit port, and then I've got a bunch of 2.5 ports on there as well for all my other stuff. That one doesn't do PoE, but otherwise, from a port standpoint, it has everything that I could want. This one has just about everything that I want. Of, of course, it also has the Unify integration, but I would have liked it better if it had just maybe one or two more 10 gig ports on board, but I'm sure at some point they'll come up with something else in the future. But it's nice to see them coming up with something for this segment of the market because I often found myself stepping outside of Unify's products and losing that integration to get the connectivity that I wanted. And this one is very close to what I've been looking for at a fairly reasonable price. Although I am a bit miffed that I missed the fine print about the power supply when I bought it. It would have been nice to have had the power supply included, which was my assumption. But that gripe aside, it is a nice piece of hardware from Unify, and it's going to be a very nice integration into my network. I've got more to come on some network changes coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.